Roshanara Ali, is there any engagement with the displaced and displacement in Gaza from the UK side? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And first of all, I want to congratulate Simone and the ODI team for doing this piece of research because I think it's really vital that uh, we get to the root of what's happening uh, as this report highlights because too often the debates tend to be at the high level uh, in relation to international negotiations and not enough on people's everyday lives and how the conflict affects uh, them in terms of their the lack of hope in, in terms of what they seek to achieve in their lives. You want to, you want to know what the UK is doing. Obviously, I'm, I'm an opposition uh, spokesperson, uh, so I don't speak for the government. But what I would say we'll is that... We'll get to that what do you think the UK should be doing in a okay. minute, but what do you think it's doing at the moment? Well, at the moment, the UK, through the International Development Aid Budget, contributes uh, uh, funding, um, uh, some 86 million up to 2015 of DFID funding uh, is allocated. But the question is, and of course at the EU level, there's support going in. The question is that uh, time and again, uh, for, for many, many years, the UK has provided development assistance to Gaza and the uh, West Bank. But too often, as the conflict kicks in, whether it's Operation Cast Lead and, and many others, the good work of agencies such as UNRWA and other uh, uh, NGOs gets undermined by the conf constant conflict. So we have two sets of challenges. One is uh, providing assistance and direct help um, where necessary, but also sustaining that and making sure that it doesn't get undermined by this ongoing conflict that is affecting people's lives on the ground, whether in Gaza or the West Bank. So you can imagine the frustration of British uh, taxpayers that despite the assistance that is provided, and rightly so, too often it's undermined by the appalling politics of the region. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that there are a whole set of challenges uh, around how the British government uh, engages. Um, and this is where uh, I want to highlight uh, some of the things I believe that the current government is failing to do and needs to focus on. Uh, I, don't, I don't agree with many things David Cameron says, but one, of the thing, one, one statement that I, uh, I fully support that he made uh, a few years ago was that his description of Gaza as one of the world's largest open prisons, if, I, if I've correctly quoted him. Uh, and the testimonies we've just heard uh, from the previous speakers uh, highlight that more than ever before, that people are effectively prisoners in their homes, uh, the lack of opportunities, the staggering level of um, hopelessness uh, because of a lack of employment opportunities or trading opportunities and so on, not to mention the psychological issues that people face. So what does this all mean for the international community? What does it mean for the UK government? Where should it be doing more? Uh, first of all, one of the major failures of this government has been uh, it is its inability to rise up to the challenge of showing international leadership. Britain has a unique role to play in helping to resolve this conflict, but it's not rising up to this challenge. We have, because of our history, because of the legacy Britain left behind, we have a unique role and a unique responsibility. I believe that the British government is not fulfilling that responsibility what adequately. What can the British government well, the do? Well, first thing, the first thing is that the British government needs to apply pressure on our American allies to renew the negotiations and restart the negotiations. Because as you've heard from the previous speakers, the fact that the time is, the fact is time is running out uh, for people, ordinary citizens living in Gaza and the West Bank. The second thing is that just recently when the international community largely supported the, re the, the, um, the, the motion to recognize Palestine, the British government decided to sit on the fence. We believe that it should have supported that, ne that re request for recognition of statehood but by the Palestinians. These are important symbolic you, you steps that the British yeah. government could have made and is failing to. The final thing I would say is that we have a unique opportunity now with the American government and President Obama having a second term 
in uh, restarting negotiations so that we uh, we can get to a situation where the underlying causes behind what's happening in Gaza, whether it's to do with the blockade, whether it's to do with access, whether it's to do with dealing with the humanitarian issues that have been alluded to, are addressed. But and we're not in that position. But you seem to be saying that the only way to help Gaza at the moment is a general resolution of the entire conflict. No, uh, what I'm saying is that there are two levels at which... What can we do to help well Gaza now? Yeah, absolutely. Before the resolution. Well, well I'm, I, what I've said is that there's the immediate issue of providing assistance, and we need to be resolute in making sure that we provide development aid assistance to the agencies that are working on the ground. But the reality is, and I think our colleague in UNRWA, uh, Robert Turner, will, will be able to shed more light to it, the reality is providing that support, providing the uh, help that citizens lead, need in Gaza, or the West Bank for, for, in, for that matter, but particularly in Gaza, um, there are many restrictions in how uh, services can be provided. And we need to make sure that some of those restrictions are addressed. And that requires, each ev at every level, uh, when uh, NGOs are operating on the ground, they need uh, some of those uh, blockages addressed. And some of those can only be addressed through wider political negotiations. That's not to say we shouldn't continue to provide the assistance where, where it's desperately needed, and clearly that has been highlighted. But we cannot divorce the need for direct support and assistance on the ground the political from the political <laughs> situation, uh, not, absolutely. not least because time is running out. And it's up to the international community to uh, make sure that this issue uh, is not uh, the, prior the priority that's placed on coming, uh, addressing the conflict is not um, uh, undermined. There are clearly a number of other uh, issues, uh, particularly in relation to the situation in uh, the post-Arab Spring countries that is attracting a great deal of international attention, and rightly so also about Syria. But it's very important that we keep the pressure on the international community also not to forget the political uh, challenges facing, uh, uh, facing people in, uh, in Gaza and in terms of the Israel-Palestine conflict. Uh, Simone, I was going to ask you in a minute just to comment on whether you've heard in your uh, report when you spoke to people about what they, the, the Gazans themselves, what they would like, what kind of help, governmental help from overseas they'd like. But first, let me ask Robert Turner, 